How about another round of applause for tonight's winner so far, huh? So impressive, all the work that these uh, men and women are doing. Um, after 27 years, you'd think that GMA, GMIS has uh, pretty much run out of firsts, but we have another one this year. 2015 marks the first year of the top two awards, Engineer of the Year and Scientist of the Year, will both go to women. That's awesome. And we're about to meet one of them in a few moments, but first, we have a very special video message from her boss, ladies and gentlemen, the NASA Administrator, Mr. Charles Bolden. On behalf of the entire NASA family, I welcome all of you to the 2015 Hispanic Engineer National Achievement Awards Conference, powered by great minds in STEM. I'm sorry I couldn't join you in person, but I'm delighted you're all gathering in Pasadena, home to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where so many NASA science missions are developed and managed. For the last 27 years, NASA has also enjoyed a strong connection to great minds in STEM. We are a proud founding sponsor, and we've been at every conference since the first in 1989. Currently, Great Minds in STEM Chair Ray Mahavo serves as on the NASA Advisory Council Ad Hoc Task Force on STEM Education, where we're brainstorming ways to improve our educational efforts to make them even more engaging and inclusive. NASA personnel from eight centers, as well as headquarters, have participated in Great Minds in STEM programming. This includes K through 12 programs like Viva Technology, the Educators Institute, and the STEM Up Initiative, as well as university programs like the HENAC College Bowl, where NASA has been the lead sponsor for each of its 16 years. Since 2006, NASA has partnered with Great Minds in STEM to award 112 scholarships to STEM college students. That's an impressive investment and one that I know will continue to pay off in the coming years as we diversify our workforce and make sure that all great minds have a chance to make the next giant leaps in exploration. NASA is very proud of the 48 Hispanic STEM professionals honored by great minds in STEM through 2014. Today, we add four new names to that list. Shannon Rodriguez Sonabria from the Goddard Space Flight Center is receiving a HENAC Award for Most Promising Engineer or Scientist. Christina G. De Hoya from the Johnson Space Center and Rosalie Santos Ebo from the Kennedy Space Center were named 2015 HENAC Luminaries. And Dr. Elisa Quintana joins Franklin Chang Diaz, Sid Guterres, and Ellen Ochoa as Engineer or Scientist of the Year. Great minds in STEMs two highest awards. So congratulations to all being honored today. Keep up the good work. Our journey to Mars will need a steady supply of qualified, motivated young Americans to pursue STEM degrees and careers. And we appreciate the efforts of HENAC to help make sure we have them. On behalf of NASA, I applaud and salute the entire class of 2015 HENAC award winners. Thanks to all of you. To introduce the 2015 Scientist of the Year, please welcome the Director of Science at NASA Ames Research Center, Dr. Michael D. Piquet. Good evening. Tycho Brahe, Galileo Galilei, Edwin Hubble, Johannes Kepler, and now, Elisa V. Quintana. <laughs> Listing Dr. Quintana with some of history's greatest astronomers may seem like a bit of an overstatement, but we don't think so. All four used the most advanced astronomical instruments available to them to reach paradigm-altering conclusions that shattered conventional wisdom and challenge the way humanity views the cosmos and our place in it. Dr. Quintana is a member of NASA's Kepler Space Telescope Team. 
She has worked on the front lines of a mission that is rewriting the narrative in contemporary, contemporary astrophysics. Kepler has proved what most scientists accepted on faith, that planets are common in our Milky Way galaxy. Because of breakthroughs made by great astronomers over the centuries and by those working with Kepler data, we've come closer to answering a fundamental question. Are we alone? But until Elisa and her team of scientists at NASA's Ames Research Center discovered Kepler 186F in 2014, there was no hard evidence that any other planet could be habitable. Launched in 2009, Kepler is designed to look for these Earth-like planets. It uses a photometer that continually monitors the brightness of over 145,000 stars. These data are transmitted to Earth where they, where they are analyzed by teams like the one Dr. Quintana leads to detect periodic dimming caused by planets that cross in front of their host star. By 2014, Kepler had detected nearly 1,000 extrasolar planets, but none could be considered truly Earth-like. Until that is, Elisa and her team began closely looking at Kepler 186f. It was the first definitive planet that was both Earth-sized and orbited in a region where temperatures are conducive to liquid water, a necessary condition for habitability. Dr. Quintana has spent time working on many aspects of the mission since she joined the Kepler program in 2006. One of her most significant contributions was in the essential task of writing the software to calibrate the instrument. Her work, therefore, has been instrumental in the 1,300 scientific publications that have utilized data collected by the Kepler spacecraft. Not bad for a girl who started out at community college and struggled with the hard sciences while she figured out what major she wanted to pursue. Her real spark came when she transferred to the University of California at San Diego, and her physics advisor turned out to be the legendary Sally Ride, the first female astronaut. She not only mentored Dr. Quintana, but also got Elisa involved in her science youth program for K through 12 students. Elisa's experience working with Sally Ride reinforced her commitment to inspire the next generation of young women to pursue the sciences. Esteemed guests, it is my privilege and distinct honor to present the Scientist of the Year Award to Dr. Elisa, Elisa V. Quintana. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Um, so I am a NASA astrophysicist, and I study stars and planets. Um, my goal as a research scientist is to help determine if life exists beyond the solar system. So working in this field has given me a different perspective. Um, and so I tend to view everyone here on Earth as equals. Um, we are all intelligent beings capable of doing great things like searching for life among the hundreds of billions of stars. Um, but when I take my head out of the clouds, um, however, I realize that here on Earth, the, these uh, differences among people um, when it comes to the quality of science produced um, really matters. Um, we know that greater cultural diversity among scientists brings differences in perspectives and values. And this leads to more rigorous science. Uh, the field of astrophysics is severely lacking the Hispanic voice, uh, especially from Latinas. 
And so I applaud Great Minds in STEM for bringing us all here to help change this. So my choice to pursue a career in astrophysics uh, wasn't made until I was in my early 20s. And the main reason I didn't decide earlier is simply because I didn't realize it was an option. Um, I was born and raised in Silver City, which is a small mining town in, in southwestern New Mexico. <laughs> uh, so I grew up surrounded by my large Mexican family um, where my friends were my cousins, my teachers in school were my aunts, um, my principal was my uncle, <laughs> true story. <laughs> and um, I had a w wonderful childhood there with very loving and supportive parents. Um, but what I didn't have there were any role models in science or any STEM field. No one in my large extended family uh, went to graduate school. In fact, no one ever even left Silver City. So, Despite the fact that the night sky in New Mexico is one of the best places to see stars in the sky, uh, it never once crossed my mind that I could study them for a living. And so, although my family was traditional in many ways, um, I had two uh, grandmothers that were very strong, sassy women uh, with what we now would recognize as feminist views. And they really instilled in me uh, a sense of equality, both as a female and as a Latina, uh, which I now realize helped me succeed in the uh, male-dominated field of physics. So even though neither of my grandmothers went to college, uh, they were both strong role models in my life. And I do believe that if I had women scientist role models early on in my life, uh, my journey to becoming a scientist would have been much, much easier. Um, and so because I didn't really know what I wanted to do for a long time. I didn't always take school seriously. Uh, in high school, I um, had my grades went up and down, uh, transferred to a community college um, upon my mother's insistence. I eventually transferred to UC San Diego, uh, where, as Michael mentioned, my advisor was Sally Ride. She was the first woman American astronaut to fly into space. And she became a strong role model and mentor and it was then that I decided to pursue a PhD in physics. Um, now, before I met Sally Ride, my only space-related role model was Judy Jetson, who, <laughs> who would have been a great role model if she had gone to school or been more studious. Um, so I just wanted to say that in, in addition to having really good mo role models, um, I can't stress enough how important it is to have a supportive family. And I've been blessed with a family that not only supported the choices I made, uh, but encouraged me to take risks. The only graduate schools I got accepted to were thousands of miles away from home. Uh, so I reluct reluctantly moved to Michigan to pursue my PhD. <laughs> and I know from experience the, that the Hispanic culture typically encourages family uh, to stay close to home. Uh, for example, my own grandmother offered to pay for my college, um, uh, but only if I went to the Univers University of New Mexico, which is right next to her house. Um, and so I appreciate the offer. Um, at, you know, it's not always a bad thing to stay at home, but it can, it can potentially limit your opportunities. Um, so I encourage students to spread your net wide when looking for opportunities, because you can always go back home with your degree in hand, I'm proud of your accomplishments. So. <laughs> and uh, lastly, I just wanted to note um, that perfection isn't a requirement for success. I'm a student that got A's and B's and sometimes other grades. And it's easy to get discouraged when you don't perform as well as others. Uh, graduate school in STEM fields is hard, um, but I can say with experience, um, with dedication, and with persistence, and allowing yourself to stumble and learn from your mistakes, um, that you can achieve any goals that you set for yourself. 
Thank you.